I think one of the great strengths of design is that it can visualize alternative futures. With this exhibition, we want to look at the energy transition that we're facing currently, and that is urgently needed, the transition from fossil fuels to renewable. And we think that this is a transition that shouldn't be led only by politics, economical interests, technology, but that design should also play a key role in this transition. We have to um, find out how we can make better use of the power of the sun, of the tides, of the wind, so kind of move with the natural flow, if you will. But all in all, it's important to have a positive outlook and design can help having that by showing possible directions and by communicating them, um, by visualizing them. And there's quite a few projects in the exhibition that do exactly that. There would have been many ways to tell the story because energy is such a broad subject. We decided to start with the human body um, speak about human power, so human power to actually generate energy, but also human power to have an influence on energy politics. The second section of the exhibition speaks about energy tools, so new means and modes to harvest renewable energies in our homes, in and around the house. That's mainly product design, experiments, prototypes. The third section then speaks about two sectors that are responsible for about two-thirds um, of the global energy consumption in the world, that is uh, mobility, traffic, transport, and uh, the building sector, architecture. So we jump in scale from product to architecture and mobility, and then in the last section of the exhibition, jump in scale once more to urban planning, infrastructural planning, speaking about new energy networks, uh, working or relying on renewable energies. What was really interesting to, to learn was how many young architects and designers are working on the subject of energy flows, of um, creating new products by which we could use renewable energies. Architects taking so much more care about the life cycle of their buildings. How can buildings become powerhouses in themselves to really generate all the energy that they need for the building itself, or ideally can even provide energy for their surroundings. There's currently so much happening, and it may be the first time since, say, the 1970s, when we had this last really big oil crisis and energy crisis, that there's now kind of a second wave of designers and architects devoting their time to these issues. Thank you.